we generally generalize a single frequency wave um, with the wave function psi instead of y. So we often just call this psi. That's just a general wave function representing a displacement from equilibrium, not necessarily in the y direction. Uh, what else can I say? Um, nothing wrong with using y. I also want to point out that notice now we've got two different velocities. We've got the wave velocity, which is the propagation in the x direction. Um, and that's this down here, f lambda, which is also equal to omega over k. Yeah. And, but notice also that this wave must move in the plus x direction. The wave moves in the plus x direction. So what if we want the wave to move in the minus x direction? Oh, how do we know this wave moves in the plus x direction? Well, um, if you increase time, as time goes on, in order for psi, if we want to look at the peak here and just ask what happens to the peak here, if we increase time, if time goes on, then uh, because there's a minus sign there, x has to increase, uh, sorry, um, yeah, x has to increase as t increases x has to increase as t increases in order to keep psi a constant, right? Because that, that if, we, if we talk about the wave moving on, we're saying that that point at that amplitude has to move to the right. At a later time, that point is going to be over here. And so as t increases, x also increases because of the minus sign between kx and omega t. So how do we, what is a, an equation for a wave that moves in the minus x direction? And a, a wave that moves in the minus x direction would be psi equals a psi. And again, I go back and forth between psi max or a, a times kx plus omega t plus phi. Uh, and we, we, it doesn't matter if it's plus phi or minus phi because phi is just an arbitrary constant that can have an arbitrary sign. Um, I was just wondering if we should have made that minus to make that consistent, but it doesn't matter. Um, but this is a wave that moves in the minus x direction. Right, so this was a wave that moves in the plus x direction. Okay, what else? Um, I can't remember if I mentioned, but there's two velocities that we're talking about here now. We're talking about the wave velocity, which is how fast these peaks move along. But there's also the velocity of a point on the wave, right, which is called the transverse velocity, right? That's because that's transverse to the motion of the wave. The, the wave moves in the x direction. There's also a velocity in the y direction. Each point on the wave moves up and down. That's the simple harmonic motion velocity. Each, move on the, each point on the wave moves up and down. So this is the transverse velocity, transverse velocity, as opposed to the wave velocity. Um, and those are different things. Those are very different things. The wave velocity is this here. The transverse velocity is v, let's go ahead and write it here, v transverse is just dy dt or d psi dt. That's the velocity moving up and down in the y direction, right? Not the x direction, d psi dt. And the transverse velocity is that, therefore um, a omega cosine kx. Whoops, uh, this was a, uh, yeah, well, okay. It doesn't matter for this one, that's fine. Omega t plus phi. Okay, so that's the transverse velocity. It's the time derivative of the displacement in the y direction. That's a different thing than the wave velocity, which is the wave, which is just f lambda or omega over k. And then there's, of course, the transverse acceleration. Remember, this is just, this is just like simple harmonic motion. The transverse acceleration the up-down motion of any point on the wave is d squared psi dt squared. Whoops, d squared psi dt squared. The transverse acceleration is, and again, I'm doing this the wave that moves in the minus x direction. If we did the wave that moves in the plus x direction, there would be a minus sign difference. Um, that's a minus a omega squared sine. Oh my gosh, sorry sine 
kx plus omega t plus phi. Um, and then I do, so, so there you go, transverse velocity is different than um, wave velocity. Um, again, the wave, the wave is going to move on in this direction at the wave velocity, but any point on the wave is going to move up and down at the transverse velocity. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Notice that d squared psi dt squared, if I take the derivative with respect to t, that d squared psi... Hold on a second. All right, I was not being careful. Um, and notice that the transverse velocity is just has to do with the motion, um, the up-down motion. It doesn't matter about the back and forth motion. So it's, it's actually the partial derivative of psi with respect to t because we treated this as a constant. We treated x as a constant. We just took the derivative of omega t. We treated x as a constant. X, you know, there is actually, X is a function of T, but we treated X as a constant in order to find the transverse velocity because we didn't care about the fact that the wave was moving in the X direction. So it is a partial derivative, which means take the derivative with respect to T, pretending, or not pretending, but holding everything else a constant. So it's the partial derivative of, X, of psi with respect to T. I think you know what partial derivatives are. You should know what partial derivatives are. They are um, the derivative of the function with respect to the variable of interest while holding everything else constant. It's that simple. So it's just saying, hey, let's take the derivative with respect to t and not worry if x is a function of t or phi is a function of t. So what I wanted to show you is that notice that the, um, that the transverse acceleration or d squared psi dt squared, d squared psi dt squared, if I take the derivative with respect to time, holding everything else constant, is equal to minus a omega squared sine of the argument. Notice also, if I were to go ahead and take d squared psi dx squared, why would I want to do that? Well, I'll show you that we're going to get minus a k squared times the sine of the argument. So if we take the derivative with respect to x, we get a k squared out. If we take the derivative with respect to t, we get an omega squared out. But everything else remains the same. So therefore, d squared psi dt squared is equal to omega squared over k squared times d squared psi dx squared. That's what I wanted to show you. That is just generally true. Let me write that here. d squared psi dt squared is equal to omega squared over k squared times d squared psi dx squared. I just showed that was true for a single frequency wave. Um, and it turns out that it's true for all waves. This is the wave equation. We've talked about it before. It's the wave equation. If something is a wave, it must satisfy this equation, um, where omega squared over k squared is v squared, right? It's velocity squared, because we said velocity, the wave velocity is omega over k. So, whoops, so that is v squared. So, d something satisfies this equation, it is a wave with speed v. We'll come back to this, we'll do examples of this later. A lot of, you know, derivation, etc. Just talking about the equation of a wave um, and what we came down to, dot, 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 and single frequency wave, psi equals A sine kx minus omega t plus phi, and the wave equation, d squared psi dt squared equals v squared times d squared psi dx squared is the equation of any wave. Um, even not, not just a single frequency wave. We're going to take some time now to explore this function um, and uh, what else can we learn from it.